Howdy y'all, my name is Madison Tobias, and this is my video submission for the Monarch Butterfly Project for ENTO 322. Today I'm going to be talking about what me and my group did with this project, and what the information is going to be used for, and how we plan it out, and just all the tea, so stay tuned. Um, first of all, I want to talk about uh, the overview of the project. Basically, um, we were working with the Texas A&M Apiary, which, if you guys don't know what that means, it's basically where they study the bees and their pollinating habits and things like that on campus. Um, we didn't actually work with monarch butterflies. I think it's just called that because the other groups did, but ours was definitely focused on bees. So um, we were uh, given our instructions by the apiary, and we worked very we worked with them. Um, and we were given instructions to make a PowerPoint about the pollinating plants of Texas and their impacts with bees and just give an information, an informational presentation on that. Um, and the information from those slides and that PowerPoint would then be used to make an informational pamphlet about Texas pollinators for bees. Um, I think originally we were going to make that pamphlet, but because of time complications, uh, we didn't end up doing that, so basically we were just responsible for the PowerPoint. Um, my group members were Reese Graves, Vanessa Warren, Shannon J. Kubrick, sorry Janet, sorry Shannon, I'm pretty sure I just butchered that, um, Maria Campbell, Dawson Tidwell, William Black, Shelby Ridlin, Gilberto Reborioso, and of course me, Madison. Um, to do this project, we just met up at Evans Library and organized it. Um, each of us was responsible for doing two, four slides, one for every plant. So we each had to do research on four pollinating plants. Um, we did it in alphabetical order so that nobody would repeat pollinators. Um, I was responsible for researching four plants um, that start with the letter D through the letter F. So I could pick a plant from from any of those letters uh, for plants, and um, we didn't we weren't required to do this, but I picked two that bloom in the spring and two that bloom in the fall, just to have like a nice balance of information there. Um, so I'm just going to get right into my part of the research. Uh, there's 42 slides in this PowerPoint, so there's no way I could go over what everyone did, but um, each of us were responsible for four plants, and so now I'm going to present my plants. Um, the two spring are the ones that I'm going to talk about first. Uh, the first one that I researched was the Aragiron strigiosus, also known as the fleabane daisy. Um, this is just like your stereotypical looking daisy. Um, it's a, it is a breed of daisy and it flowers annually or biannually. Um, it's technically classified as a herb and it's a pollinator for bees and butterflies that blooms in May or April. My second spring plant is actually a strawberry. It's the Frigeria virginiana, the Virginia strawberry. Um, this one flowers perennially and it flowers in the springtime between May and June. It's a herb as well and it attracts bees and butterflies and the fruit of course attracts uh, other wildlife that will eat it and pass on the seeds that way. And now I'll show you the fall ones that I did. Um, let me get to them. Ah, here we go. Okay, so my first fall one was the Eupatorium serotonum, or the white boneset flower. This is a perennial herb which blooms from September to November. Its flowers grow in small white clusters, attracting primarily butterflies and bees. Um, it's distributed across the country in a variety of habitats, and it just grows in like these small white clusters of flowers. Um, my second fall plant is the Euthamamium gymnospermoids, or the Texas Golden Top. Um, the Texas Golden Top is also a perennial herb, and it blooms from the late summer to early fall. It grows in these long, erect stems that are capped with dark yellow tufted leaves, and it's of specific value to native Texas bees, but it grows everywhere, not just in Texas, like all across the country. So that concludes my part of the project as far as information goes but each of us did pretty much the same thing. So we just planned to do four slides each, and we followed through with that pretty quickly. Um, then Vanessa, our group lead, submitted that to the head lady at the apiary so that she could then turn that information into pamphlets on, I guess, her own time because um, 
because we started so late. Um, so the impact of this was to spread information about pollinating plants and bees. Obviously, um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, there's been problems lately with the bee population declining and they're not really sure why. Um, so one way to help with that would obviously be to spread pollinating plants that are very useful to bees so that they can um, increase their population, increase their pollinating activity. Um, it's very helpful for the environment and of course honey and things like that are helpful to the human lifestyle because we use that and um, we sell it and um, profit off of it and things like that. And obviously our survival depends upon pollinators like bees and butterflies, so we need them to have lots of things to pollinate and this is helping research that. Um, as far as future plans, uh, obviously the next step after this, after gathering information, would be to plant more of these pollinating um, things, <laughs> which um, I think other groups did like some physical work and planted and things like that. And um, I originally thought that we would be as well, but I don't know if that just was never the plan or if it was a time thing, um, but we didn't. So the apiary, I guess, will be responsible for that. Um, so definitely implementation would involve planting that and actually spreading the pollinators in a way that will help the bee population the best. And I'm sure the apiary is like fully on that. <laughs> so yeah, um, as far as improvement, I think that this project would have gone better had there been, I guess, better time planning because I think the people in charge either forgot about us or um, just were not very prudent with giving us information. Um, our group had emailed, the, emailed people many, many times, multiple times, and would just kind of hear, you know, oh, we'll get back to you later. But then we never did until she bothered them, like, you know, many more times. And so I understand everyone's busy and everyone has a life and uh, people have stuff going on, but... Um, we definitely could have done, I think, more work or had done more hands-on activities had there been better planning from the people who gave us this project in the first place. So um, I'm not complaining about it, but that's the, just the truth. Um, it could have been improved in that way. I don't think that was on us, though, because um, our job was to just do what we were told, and we did it very well, I think. Um, my group members were great. Everybody showed up when they were supposed to show up. Everybody worked on what they're supposed to work on. Um, everyone had a good attitude and was fun to hang out with. Um, and so, yeah, I think that this was a very successful project and it has a good positive impact for the pollinating, for the future, <laughs> excuse me, for the future of pollinating um, studies. So um, that concludes my Monarch Butterfly video submission. And thank you so much for listening. And uh, thanks and gig'em. Bye.